Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. In the next few minutes, we're going to get familiar with Lightroom Classic's new masking features. Select the Masking icon or tap M to access all of the different masking tools. There are two new tools, Select Subject and Select Sky, both of which make selections using artificial intelligence and machine learning. Next, we have the local adjustment tools, the brush, linear gradient, and radial gradient. And the color, luminance, and depth range mask controls have been elevated to their own tools. To the right of each tool is the keyboard shortcut for selecting that tool. In this image, I'll start by making some simple adjustments. I'll select the brush, and we can see the new masks panel. We can reposition this anywhere in the preview area and even dock it to the panel track. We can use the brush settings to change the size, the feather or the hardness of the brush, and the flow, which controls the rate of application of the adjustment. Starting at the top of the window divider, I'll hold the shift key and paint to constrain the brush to a vertical line. By default, Lightroom displays a red overlay in the image to show the areas that are going to be affected by the adjustment. I'll use the right bracket key in order to increase the brush size and then paint over the second divider. If you ever need to change the color of the overlay, you can click on the red swatch. As soon as I make an adjustment, Lightroom Classic automatically hides the red mask overlay. To show the mask overlay again, we can check show overlay or tap the O key to toggle the overlay off and on. We can also position the cursor over the mask thumbnail in the masks panel or hover over the pin in the image area. If I've painted in an area where I don't want to see the adjustment, I can switch to the eraser tool and then paint in order to remove the mask. There are several different overlay options that we can choose from from the masks panel. To view the mask similar to a layer mask in Photoshop, we can choose white on black. Where the mask is white, the adjustment will be fully visible, and as the mask transitions from white to black, the adjustment becomes less and less visible. Where the mask is black, the adjustment will be completely hidden. I'll go ahead and increase the brush size, and then paint again to make sure that I've removed the adjustment from this area. Then let's switch that back to color overlay and I'll tap the O key to hide it. We can double click on the name of a mask in order to rename it, making it much easier to find if we want to re-edit it later. To toggle the visibility of the adjustment, I can click on the eye icon to toggle it off, click again to toggle it on, or click and hold to temporarily disable it, release the cursor to enable it. To add another mask, I'll click the plus icon and then choose linear gradient and drag into the image from the left to right. I can use the pin to reposition it, drag on either side in order to increase or decrease the length of the gradient, and click and drag on the middle line in order to rotate it. I'll use Command Z on Mac, Control Z on Windows to undo that. You'll notice that all of the sliders are set to zero thanks to the new reset sliders automatically option. Here I'm going to add some clarity as well as some dehaze, decrease the color temperature, and increase the tint. Now in order to affect the other side of the image, I could add another new linear gradient, but instead I'll click the more icon and choose to duplicate the mask. Then I'll click the mask to expand it so we can see the linear gradient, use the more icon and invert it. To quickly reset the sliders, I'll double click the word effect and then increase the temperature and increase the shadows. To toggle all of the adjustments applied to this image, I'll use the toggle switch in the upper left of the masks panel. There's before and after. All right, with this next image, I'll choose Select Subject, and Lightroom Classic will use machine learning to select the subject and displays the default red mask overlay. Here, I'll increase the temperature quite a bit, as well as the exposure. I'll increase the highlights, and the shadows and increase the saturation. Next, I'll choose to add the Select Sky Mask. Again, Lightroom Classic uses machine learning, this time selecting the sky. And I'll make it a little bit more dramatic by adding some clarity as well as dehaze. I'll decrease the saturation 
and increase the noise reduction to remove any noise from the sky. So far, all of our masks have been made from a single tool. However, we can combine as many tools as are needed to create a mask. I'll add a radial gradient. And as I drag out, we can see that the center of the ellipse is what will be affected by the adjustment. If I want to affect what's outside of the ellipse, I can choose invert and then make my adjustment. However, I feel that the radial gradient is darkening the bushes a bit too much. So next to the radial gradient, I'll choose subtract, select the brush, decrease the flow, and then paint to slowly remove the radial gradient adjustment from that area. On the masks panel, we can see the two components that make up the mask, the brush and the radial gradient. I can target them by selecting them either in the masks panel or by clicking on their pin in the image area. To view all of the mask pins and not just the pins for the targeted mask, we can use the more icon and choose to show unselected mask pins. Each component of the mask can be edited independently. For example, if I choose the gradient, I can reposition it as well as resize it and even rotate it independently of the mask that I created with the brush. If I wanted to add to a mask, I could click the Add button. I'll choose Brush, increase the flow, and paint in the road area. If I change my mind, I can always delete an entire mask by clicking the More icon next to the mask and choosing Delete, or I can delete a component by using the More icon next to the component and choosing to delete that component. Next, I'll add a color range mask. Here I can click with the eyedropper in order to select a color. I can hold down the shift key in order to add up to five different colors, or I can click and drag in order to select a range of colors. Here I want to decrease the exposure of the road as well as decrease the saturation. However, I don't want the sky to be affected, so I'll choose subtract and then select sky. I can target the color range and then use the refine slider to either decrease or increase the range of colors that are affected by the adjustment. I'll add another color range mask, and this time I'll use the eyedropper to select these yellow orange flowers. Then I'll decrease my temperature as well as the tint. I'll increase the exposure and decrease the saturation. And then to add additional colors to the range, I'll hold down the shift key, click in the yellows, as well as these green areas here to affect them all. To toggle all of the adjustments applied to this image, I'll use the toggle switch at the top of the masks panel. So there's before and after. Excellent, that wraps up this quick overview of the essential masking features in Lightroom Classic. Additional tips, shortcuts, and information on luminance and depth range masking, and a lot more can be found online at jcos.com.